Hello and welcome to a brand new mini series for Transport Fever 2. What are we doing? We are drifting off into free game. That's what we're doing. Free play mode. As you can see here, this is what we've got. It's the Midwest mini mainline. I've started on the main screen as there's been another update. Plenty of updates coming uh, during the pre-release phase of the game. So for the benefit of Urban Games, should they be watching this? There we go. We've got the build number down there. Now, how did I make the map we're about to play? This will give you a clue. Don't be, don't be fooled by a small map. This is the smallest size without changing any of the settings. We've got it at 1-3 ratio so that we could encourage a sort of mainline thing going on. Now, you can hit this randomize button and it will create the towns. This is what I kind of went with. Now, fear not, I can't remember the actual, this is the seed just here. I can't remember the seed and I couldn't get back to it and find it. But we're going to be using the brand new feature, if it stays in, hopefully. If not, I have a backup plan where we can share save games through the workshop. Hopefully that all stays in and it's still a thing that we can do. So my plan is to put the, the map you're about to see on the workshop in its start. So a blank map at the beginning and the current playthrough. I'll keep that updated for us. There you go. That's literally what I did. I, I messed with these and it changed stuff. I messed with that and changed stuff. I changed all this. This one, I just threw it up to max and then those and those. Uh, as you can see, when you go to next, we've chosen the USA uh, vehicle set. What we're going with, we're gonna bring all the way back is one I've prepared earlier, as they say. So here we are. This is the map we're going to be using. We're currently at the north end of the map, and this is Hibbing. I, I've chosen three, three, uh, no, four. There are four towns, as you can see them now. We've got Hibbing, Grand Rapids, Minneapolis, <laughs> and Bloomington on the map from, this will be the south up to the north, all in uh, Minnesota state of minnesota in the midwest i mean i think this could pass as somewhere in uh, in the midwest it could pass as somewhere in europe as well so kind of the best of both worlds there i thought it was nice we've got a challenge we do have a challenge it's going to be tricky our main line is going to be running all the way from bloomington through minneapolis up to grand rapids and then we'll swing round over the river and up to hibbing what we need to look at first, I mean, we could we could uh, slide down here and do a little bit of this and go all the way across. This is the map. It looks lovely. I'm going to say I didn't create it. It's completely created by the game and just messing with the sliders. Why have I chosen a small map? Well, there's multiple reasons for that. Let's go down here and just look out. But where we're going to be starting which i'll explain soon now what we can do is some sneakiness down here we can still play it and have it paused but i'm going to talk a little bit about why it's a, a small map mainly to prove that you can have a bit of fun and some challenge and some satisfaction on a small map the bigger maps are fine but you'll find that only the beefier computers can run those in the late game I'm hoping what to demonstrate here is considering most people, the majority of people based on Steam surveys and and sales of computer hardware have a, a, a sort of mid-range, lower to mid-range PC. Like I said, we've thrown in the mainline aspect to try and encourage us to have a bit of a challenge, self-imposed challenge. And the reason we're starting in Minneapolis is because we have this nice little setup here. Stone to construction materials into Minneapolis there. We're starting in 1900. The reason being is we've seen enough horse and carts uh, through through the various playthroughs on the internet, as well as through the, the campaign that I was doing. Should we get going then? Should we get going? I can talk more once we, we get everything set up. So what is our plan to get this map going? It's on medium difficulty. But anyway, yes, what are we going to do? We, we need to supply 61 construction materials to Minneapolis. That's, that's plan A. And that's what we're going to go with to start with in episode one. I know, it's a bit of a, 
bit of a long-winded intro, but we're, we're now going to get into the gameplay. And we're going to keep playing all the way through until we've met all of the cities, all four cities, needs. So we're going to connect literally everything. That's the plan. Should we, should we start? We've got nine, well, just under 10 million. That's fine. Uh, this slider here makes no difference to progression of your map beyond what vehicles unlock. If you are playing it and you plonk down a building or buy a vehicle, you are going to char be charged for that. As it's not technically linked up to months or weeks or years, it's real time. And that will become apparent later on. Anyway, we need to get going with a freight station. And for now, it's just going to be this one. Uh, we're going to adjust this once we've got going. Nice and cheap in there. We're also going to get us a, a depot that's going to get a lot of use through the series. Absolutely. As we need to tweak this line, vehicles are going to come out of here as we need them. Because what we need to do is get these construction materials delivered to Minneapolis down here. And we need to make sure that everything with a brick on it is highlighted when we plonk this down. We are going to need to adjust this as the town grows and as our playthrough progresses. There's some weirdness that goes on. If you notice here, for some reason, it's not highlighting the factories next to it. Same with here. Uh, I don't know what that's all about. I really don't. I don't know whether it still includes them. I tell you what would be a good test then, considering this does highlight pretty much everything. A good test would be to put it here and see if they actually get fed construction materials. So we're going to put that in. That's all we need. One drop off point for our trucks. And then we can create the new lines. We're going to have, oh, do you know what you haven't done? You Burke? What have I forgot? Yeah, this place. A truck station just there. Now you pay for these. You pay uh, upkeep for all of this. Now, even though the date's paused, You'll see what I mean once we buy our first trucks. We're going to first, have we, how many lines have I set up? None. Should we, have, should we do that? Should we set up a line? I've just got like a nothing going on. Okay, let's continue the lines. We I need to set this one. It's going to go up to here. And this is going to be our, our stone delivery from our quarry up there. Let's color it a, a sort of stone color. That'll do, wouldn't it? That'll do. And that's that. I mean, you can tweak this and make sure it only picks up the right thing. Minneapolis East, we should name these something better. But we only want to be unloading stone at Minneapolis East. And we only want to be picking up stone from the quarry there. So we could, we could rename these, definitely. So what we could call this is rather than Minneapolis East, we'll call this Minneapolis Brickworks. There we go. And then we know that that station is picking up from the brickworks. I've called this nothing. We can change that as well, can't we? Ooh, how to spell Minneapolis each time. At least I'll know how to spell it. Minneapolis. I chose these town names. I could have chose one that was easier to spell. Never mind. Maybe by the end of this, we'll all know how to spell it. I mean, I'm sure many of you know how to spell it, but it's not something I write down very often. So the line is Minneapolis. Uh, Stone haulage because it's trucks. I like to go haulage for trucks and freight for trains. And we can rename this one uh, Quarry. There we go. Lovely. So that's our initial setup, nearly done. If you keep on top of naming like this, then we, we don't have to worry about it later on. So that's that done. That's that done. We are going to set up. You'll see it's got production of 400. We're going to set this line up and get it running, and then I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, how many trucks do we want on there? What we can do is play it on fast forward. No, actually buy a truck first because I want to space them out a little bit to get going. Notice there, we paid for stuff even though the date is paused. Like I said, that's not gonna that's not gonna uh, help you. You can't cheat, pause the date, and and have everything run for free. No, the game still runs as it would. Time just doesn't progress. It bodes well for the series. Buy a vehicle. Just buy a vehicle you're waffling right cargo what do we need we need some trucks that take stone we can have those or these they take all cargo we might as well have these it'll be cool to look at our our stone on the back of the trucks um to start with we're going to buy one we're going to set it 
We're not going to worry about uh, maintenance just yet, but we're going to set this on to our stone haulage line. We're also going to set... Ooh, did I actually add this line? No, let's uh, have a delivery point. It matters not, really, but I would like to start using everything they begin to produce immediately and light triggers it straight away. Going around that way will be fine for now. So this will be Minneapolis, oh, Minneapolis, Conmat Delivery. There we go. Nicely named. And just to doubly make sure, what we can do is make sure well, they only pick up the Conmat from the brickworks. Technically, you don't have to do this one. We'll, we'll leave that one alone because it's only a drop off anyway. So it doesn't matter what they drop off there. And we're going to get one truck. We don't have to use the horses. We get straight into the steam trucks here. We can either use a flatbed or a steam steam truck with a tarpauling over the top. Here's the lifespan. Because we have the game paused, it's actually four hours and three real minutes. Yeah, that's how that works. And if you then adjust this to say quarter speed, this will change if you click off and click. Oh no, it doesn't update automatically. But there you go, it's changed. Now it's five years of game time. And again, if we change this to half and click off, it's 10 years of game time. And if you put it on normal speed, it is 20 years of game time. But we're gonna be doing it like this for now as we're setting things up. So we've got four hours and three minutes before it blows up. That's not what it does. It just becomes a bit rubbish. Okay, there's a lot to explain to get going. Fortunately, we will all know what we're doing, sort of by the time this gets running. I'm supposed to be adding more trucks onto here. We can add as many as we like. There we go, we'll add another one on there. We've got one truck running this one, do we? Did I put one on? I think that, did I put one on? I didn't put one on there. Buy vehicles. We're gonna use this one. We can see the bricks on the back then when it puts them on, so, because I like that. So we're gonna buy one there and we're gonna put this one on the combat delivery line. And if we go to that line, we can then, where are you? Is it you? Yes. We can uh, configure the vehicles for here and make them all red. So visually we'll be able to see what all of our trucks are just by their color. So we can configure this one for these two trucks and make sure these are, I think it's what color they are by default, but there you go. Our red trucks are now delivering construction materials and now our grey trucks there, our grey trucks there, put your teeth in, uh, delivering stone from the quarry to this place, which hasn't kicked in yet. Now, since they go that way first, the easy thing to do is, as soon as they pass the depot again heading that way, we can add a road vehicle like so. You can just throw them all on here, and the game will space them out eventually. We can stick it on fast forward, select this for instance uh, configure vehicles see we've got this one highlighted after it's done its thing here we go say when it pulls out from from the station we can add another one on there so we've got everything running let's bring up the line statistics now that it's been running a little bit and you'll notice we we can or we're shifting 53 units of stone annually it's not annually it would Annual in the game would be a, a segment of time rather than a date. Just remember that. It's a segment of time, not a date. So there we go. So annually is, is how much we're shifting. And annually, this is how much they require. 61. So what we've got to do now is line up the... As you see, we've got a bit of delivery there. We can line up the construction delivery. Construction material delivery with with our delivery of stone so if we configure vehicles like that we can start bringing out more conmat trucks there we go they're going to go up there and if we bring up the line manager we need to bring this figure and this figure roughly close we can go a little bit above so we're we haven't got quiet periods but this should start to catch up now uh, we'll get another vehicle configure this vehicle we'll duplicate that again and I'll say one more time, because we're getting a little bit behind. We've got 25 in there now. They carry six at a time. And now, there we go. We're now balanced with a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of give. Interestingly, I just noticed this, our frequency is about the same. That will kind of uh, fluctuate as we, we get into more vehicles being on the roads as the town grows. You'll see that our goods are being placed in here. See how our frequency's dropped a little bit there. That will adjust. You'll have to give that a little bit of time. We should start to make a bit of profit, though, soon. One thing we need to note, uh, which is a little bit different to Transport Fever, the first one, is these uh, raw resources will continually produce. As we're a, we're a transport company, we care not what they're doing with it. All we know is, well, we do care what they're doing with it, where it needs to go, but after that point, it's, we don't care. All we need to care about is transporting it here, because that's the only place. And then the consumers of construction materials are these two places. So we can, if we like, deliver it, or we don't have to, and they'll, they'll sort it out themselves. They have a demand, and it's up to you whether you see to that demand or not. Obviously, you can set your own challenges, but it means you're not pressured into completing a, a, an actual line like you are in Transport Fever 1. We need to, uh, we need to expand this, don't we? Because our rate, we need to get up to 61. So we're gonna throw a couple more trucks on here, like so, send you out there. Nicely timed. We'll duplicate it again once he's got there. Oh, there's one there. Doesn't matter. Space yourselves out. You get on there. I would like this to be a little over. There we go. That'll do. Any waste, they'll still produce it. I don't know what they're doing with it. We don't care, do we? We don't care. Transportation companies don't ask what they're doing with it, usually. <laughs> it's like, you want goods? Here it is. We'll, we'll deliver it and we'll ask no questions. Now what we need to do, or can do, is, is bring up the frequency or the rate. Well, I guess you'll be bringing up the frequency and the rate, but yes, we'll bring up the rate somewhere in the region of what they're going to require. So for us, we're going to duplicate another vehicle and throw that one on the line and see what that does for our rate. There we go. We're almost at the 61. However, Minneapolis here is going to be growing. Yes, as you can see, already 75. So we're behind and we're chasing, which is good. Now, the rate of this is 74, so it's below. We, we prefer to be above. We can just click on one of these vehicles here and we'll put another one on there. At the same time, we can also add another vehicle onto there. And then we can check here and that, that'll do us for a little bit. No, no, it won't, will it? You need a bit more than that because Minneapolis needs 75. As you can see, we're trending upwards because we're meeting, what's that, half the demand roughly? Yeah, so that will give plus 75. See that it's dropping off? That's because there's a lull in between, which is why I like to oversupply rather than try and hit it bang on. I mean, the numbers look good if you can match them with both supply and demand, but in reality, there is delay from it traveling. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean as we, as we go along, as occasionally we are gonna perfectly meet demand and you'll, you'll see that what will happen is we're not actually taking enough. Oh, do you know what we could do? We can go in here, data layers, and we can click on the HUD and, and disable the costs. In fact, we can uh, disable the income as well for now. There we go, that stops the dinging. I don't mind the sound of money coming in. It's lovely. But there you go, we're making money. We're making 61K roughly on both. This will fluctuate as it goes through and slowly balances out. I would like to put another truck on here, definitely. So we can go with this, configure vehicle and duplicate that one. That should balance out, <laughs> look at that. I've somehow magically placed this bang in the middle of both. So including this loop here, it just evens out perfectly. I mean, perfect as it's gonna get. But there we go. As you can see, we're making money and it's costing us money. If we look at our, our balance here, we've got 10 million loan. That's what happens in uh, 1900 on medium difficulty. There, there's the dates. Look at that. 
2nd of March, 2nd of March, 2nd of March, 2nd of March. That's how that works. When you have time paused, you're still going to be going you're still going to be going through the same real time amount. So all of this is based on real time, your income and your expenditure. The date matters not except for progression of vehicles. So that's our initial line set up. What do we need to need to do with Minneapolis? This is what we're going to concentrate on. We're going to kind of branch out from Minneapolis. What else they need is tools. And tools are a bit of a monstrous uh, setup for us on this map. Here's our two, two forests. There and there. I don't know why it's called McKinney and Plainer. Oh, the map. I changed the names of the Heath. Grand, Grand Rapids. Yeah, the, this is what the names were. And then I picked four. So we got Plano, which isn't. I didn't realise it was going to do that. I'll go away and change that before. Because that, that's a bit confusing. But I'll change that before the next episode. And, and I'll change it on the uh, map I upload as well. Otherwise, we've got McKinney and uh, Plano. What was the town up here? It's fun to see what the town was. Boise. Yeah, that's right. Boise. I don't know how you pronounce that. And then down here we had McKinney and Wichita. There we go. But now what we've got is Bloomington, Minneapolis, Grand Rapids and Hibbing. That's kind of cool. It reminds me what was on the map. But I will change all these. There's not many on here. I mean, the map from this angle, you're like, well, it's not very big. Until you zoom down and you realise it's absolutely monstrous. Especially when we're going to do the mainline thing. How are we doing over here? Minneapolis. Its target is 256. This and this figure, so this plus 70%, is always of its, of its start population. So the initial size doesn't change. So you can only ever have whatever percentages add up here on top of that which is good limits are good otherwise your computer will crawl to a halt as we've all seen right as you can see already we need to extend both lines that's crazy we need to increase the throughput and we can keep that up there can't we we need to increase the, the throughput to match this at, at the very least we need to be quite a little way over this so we're just going to keep throwing trucks on here. I know it's a bit of a, a cop out to throw loads of trucks on, but it's a good start. It's a solid start. What it gives you is money trickling in to pay for the big stuff that we've got to do up there. We're going to take another look at that before we leave. So uh, what am I doing? Yes, you're adding a vehicle. We're going to add more vehicles to here. One on that line. And I guess we can do it from here, right? configure vehicles and one on that line as we know that they they balance fairly nicely what we're going to do before we leave is change the layout of this station so that it uh, works a little more seamlessly because as you'll see they they kind of cross over at the moment what we can do is go in here i would like to just show you how to uh, do this anyway but we can add a bit more of a platform on here because why not that way we don't have to worry about it getting full and we'll add a road there and there and what we can do then is add us another road this one heading up into there like so so that's going like that but we're going to swap these uh, terminals around in a second and then we'll do the same over here I'm sure you can see what I'm up to and we'll throw this one out into this corner it'll just balance it out quite nicely and then if we look at the lines they're doing that currently but what we can do is flip these around so oh, not like that what we can do is flip these around and we can put this one on two and this one on one and if we look at the line manager it's a mess that's not how I was expecting that to work. What are you doing there? You're kind of going the wrong way, aren't you? Why are you doing that? It was better the other way, wasn't it? Oh, or is it? Maybe if I put it in the middle, it'll work. Well, you know what? Experiments. Experiments are to be had. I'm going to move you. Let's configure this. Let's see if moving it into the middle will help it. Can we put it... 
Can we put it there, maybe? See what that does. I'm not sure on how this works. Sometimes it does it the way you want it to do, do it, and other times it's like, nah, we'll do it this way instead. I've had this working perfectly before. Uh, let's just have a look. No, you know, you're still doing silly stuff. Why aren't you going out this way? Why is it going around that way? Shouldn't you be over there? That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? You would think that would go around the back there, wouldn't you? Uh, but it's not. Oh, I know. I know what we can do. Since that's a bit plain uh, silly sausages, I know what we can do. I've got a plan, guys. I've got a plan. We're going to get rid of this. Rid of that. We're going to go back into here. Configure this. We're going to get rid of this bit. It's all trial and error, isn't it? It's all trial and error. We're going to get rid of that bit, and we're going to have a road out there. We could use the one-way ones, but as you saw, it's, it's doing some weird dancey stuff. And I don't think it's going to work as as expected. So, plan plan B, or Z it's probably up to now, is we're going to run off here, like so, and there, like that. Similar thing. Uh, in fact, we can go higher, can't we? We can have sort of a big, big industrial area here. We can run this up to there. I mean, technically, we can run it up all the way up and join in there. But uh, let, let's do it this way. I like the way that it's redrawing everything. All, all of our mistakes, my mistakes. I would like to go in there, though. That's kind of nice. It's pricey, but I'll take it. There we go. That's that's done that. Let's let's see if that's fixed it for us. We're going to close this. Have you fixed it? Beautiful. There we go. Now we know for sure these these two lines are never going to trip over each other. So we'll hit it on fast forward. They're going to figure themselves out. They're delivering. They're delivering. How's Minneapolis doing? 93. We're going to have to keep up with this, aren't we? We're going to have to keep up with this. Let's add another one on here. Like I said, you can just keep delivering into this, this construction materials plant from the stone plant up to its maximum. You can just keep shipping 100%. The rest of it will go to waste, sure. But as soon as it's required, they'll start using our lines if we're providing it. I mean, that's one thing you can do. But uh, yeah, we can, we can add another vehicle onto that line as well. No, we need to add a couple more on, probably. There we go, we'll let that run. Should we add a bus service as well and make a little bit of money there? Now, I do kind of like going uh, resident. Let's just bring up the areas here. We've got a very strong residential area here, but interestingly, we also have some residential up there. So they're kind of spread out, which, which lends itself quite nicely to loops as opposed to direct, as you're going to get a mixture of both people traveling say from here to shopping or from here to work and then they can go back but we'll try and we'll try and make one loop that leans heavily into the commerce sector over there and then another one that leans heavily into the industrial industrial area and we'll see how that goes we're going to keep playing on this speed i'll tell you why is because we should start to make money the only problem we got is we're paying quite a lot on loans so yes it may not be a good idea let's just play it on normal speed shall we we will pay off that loan we're going to take more out before oh not that we want passenger services yeah we want more money we're going to borrow more money investment it's it's a guaranteed investment because we know they're going to take our goods so this is a good place to have what will be our should we call this our commerce sector we're going to pick up every other block. Now, some people don't do this. Some people do. I like to do it because I like to give them every option to jump on my bus. And it could be a matter of a, a small calculation. Like if, if this was our only bus stop, say we put it somewhere in the middle. Yes, everybody around this, this area can get to it. However, they might just fall out the range on the time it takes for them to say walk from here to this middle bus stop wherever we put it compared to walking out the front door to the bus there so yeah that's why i like to have them uh spread out every other block to give them plenty of options to get on the bus it doesn't really slow the buses down too much this is going to be mainly commerce so what we're going to be doing is scooting off this way 
and then heading back into the uh, residential area over there. Ooh, do we want to be on this small bit of road? I would say we want to be on that bit of road instead. We've got a bit of a gap here. I don't like that. I've kind of gone a bit wonky, haven't I? We could go here as well. Why not? Let's give them the option to go there. Now the other service, we're going to go kind of anti-clockwise to that. So we're going to start going that way. This looks like the main residential area. Not surprising because it's, it's a lovely waterfront. We're then going to stop on that side. It gives them the chance to change buses. Then we're going to scoot off this way because this is for mainly industry. Although we're going to have to complete their, uh, their road for them because it is not finished. Let's just do it like that, shall we? Why not? Don't want to spend too much on roads. It's going to be a little bit awkward to start with, but we're going to adjust this as time progresses. For starters, we're going to do it every other every other block right on the corner oh there you go look they're already building eventually they're going to grow into our bus service as long as we're not losing too much money on it i don't mind so we're going this way and which way round do we go right we could share a line there but i think what we're going to do is scoot down here quickly and then we're going to head down here past this section of residential and then round the corner. Right, let's set up the two bus lines. So our commerce heavy line is going to be from here. We're going to colour it yellow. Well, we actually, no. Well, yeah, let's let's do this one. We're going to have this one yellow. We'll, we'll go for uh, industry first since it's coloured it yellow for us. We're going that way. And then we're going up here. And there. There we go. It's a sort of loop and a sort of not loop good description is that the right one i think that's the right one yeah because this is uh that's commerce there and then there so there we go that's it that's just doing mainly industry once they start building out here it will make us more and more money we're not going to put too many buses on to start with and we're going to call this mini Ooh, wrong way minneapolis is that right i hope so minneapolis what is this one? This is the industrial line. Okay. Perfect. And then the next one is going to go the other way and is going to be blue for commerce. And it's going to start here and head up that way and around the back there. Through town, as it were. But we're going to scoot off there and there. Notice we're not intersecting too much with other stops. And then we cut short and head into here. And then that's it. There we go. So you've got commerce and residential and then you've got industrial and residential and also we've got a mix up here which they can both use either services if they want to it's a bit of a walk but not too bad but that's that that's that we've got some bus services in we'll go up here and we'll just add a couple on each so we want to buy vehicles get our passenger vehicles look at this it's return of the mac you're welcome. you now got that running through your head if anybody remembers that song. Okay. I was going to sing it, but uh, no. I will not do that to you. Let's buy... Let's just buy a couple and get these lines running. We're going to put these on there. Oh, I didn't call this one anything. It doesn't matter yet. Get buses on there and then you can call it what you like. Let's buy a couple more. That's all we're starting with. We don't need too many. We just need to encourage them to get on the buses. If the if the bus stops get a bit full or or it's not drawing in enough people we can start adding more to get the frequencies down but for now we care not you going on there let's go back into the line manager we need to change this to minneapolis and this is the commercial line there we go done what we could do as well is go into the vehicle manager and color these ones blue so we've got our blue buses there and go into here and color these yellow. We'll start messing with, uh, I'll show you all of the, the, the little tweaks you can do with maintenance shortly. We don't need it just yet. We could, but we're, we're just kicking off and it's gonna cost us a bit to get going. People are very happy with our bus service that we just put on. Currently, there's quite a few uh, pub, public vehicles 
driving around. And if we go to the emissions layer, something that's quite important, uh, the dark buildings are the only ones that care about emissions, and that's residential. We, if we show here, you can see as I hover over it how much uh, emissions are being produced. If we go to current, you'll see it changing. Notice because we've got a bunch of cars here, these, these are, uh, are public, uh, private vehicles are producing emissions as well. So you need to get cars off the road. I mean, admittedly, you're going to be producing emissions, but uh, a bunch of cars all revving their engines around here would be a lot higher emissions. So we'll go with average. No one's really upset about it. And we zoom out here, you'll see where that flies in. It's mediocre at the moment. The more vehicles we put in, the more people that are traveling around, the more this will affect our overall residence that we can get. Currently, it's only minus 30. It's not too bad. As you can see, we are now delivering 80% of goods. So this is all raising up. We, the little town is uh, starting to build out. It's not really a city. Well, I don't know. It's fairly city-ish. Could be a city. How's our buses doing? They're doing all right, aren't they? We've got people down here waiting to get on the bus. Should zoom in a bit. Actually look at the pretties. There you go. Look at them all queuing up. They're looking rather dapper there. Those, I tell you what, the old cars that they've got now are beautiful. These, I love those. There's a lot more selection, isn't there? in the early years now for old cars and they, they do last quite a while as well. We're going to get to see it like this for a little while as we uh, get our initial initial industries up and running. Once we've got that running we can start thinking about progressing time or the date as it were because time's always running but we can start thinking about progressing the date. How are we doing on here? 92. We're still not meeting demand which means we're going to have to increase our throughput down here. And our rate, bizarrely, is, is quite high. But uh, what we're actually meeting in the city is, is not maximum. I mean, because you've got all this travel time. And when you drop it off down here, it's got even further to travel to each of the industry buildings we've got down here. Now, we can actually see this if we go to cargo. Who are the industries that... Ah, well, that answers that. Do you remember the, when I uh, said I wasn't sure whether that was just a graphical glitch? I think it is. Because if we click on this building, it has got 100% supply rate. Yet when we placed it down, it didn't highlight. So that is fantastic. And you can see that it's all coming down from there. So that's it. That is the start of our playthrough on the main line. Not very main line at the moment. No, because we need we need some capital investment, don't we? In order to do that, because it's going to cost us a small fortune. What we'll be doing, I'll probably leave this running if it's going to make us. No, what we'll do straight away, I'm not going to leave that running. What we're paying in loan interest and what our actual income is, is roughly the same. We're barely going to make any money. That would be a bit silly. So what we'll do when we'll come back, I'll pause this as it is, is we'll set up this logging camp. The reason being is we can run this down here, go across here. Remember, we've got the main line to consider. That's going to be running along here. That's my plan anyway. Along here, crossing over before that bridge and then going up along the outside of Minneapolis. The reason I want it to go there is we're going to have a passenger station here and bring them all in. That's my big plan. And we're going to have them freight up there. I don't know. It's probably all going to change by the time it happens. But we need to send it up to these biscuits here. They look like biscuits. I almost want to eat those. Don't eat them though because it's, it's, it's planks. We don't need to set up this entire line. What we need to worry about is making some big profit. Delivering lots of trees or lots of logs to, to our sawmill here. It will use them up to its capacity. What it does with it after that, I care not. We care not. Uh, all we care about is they're willing to pay us. Uh, we can then further take to tools and, and to, uh, what is this, machines over there. 
Yes, yes, but there we go. We've, we've got it running. Our little little industri industrial sector here is kicking in. What it means, though, is we have covered our loan interest payments. That's a good start. That means we're not going to be losing money, because remember, you do start off with a loan and interest payments. So my, my usual goal is to make sure I can at least cover those before we go expanding the network. We're going to spend several million in the next episode. Absolutely. Starting up our first train line. It's going to be a train line. It's a bit short, this one. It would it would have cost us a fortune to set up and get going. And it, it may have been profitable. But this is, this is a lot less risk involved. And I would rather spend a big amount on a, on a long distance. So I hope you enjoyed that. I know there's a lot of explaining in this one. And a, and a lot of numbers. And there's going to be a lot of numbers going forward. And we've got to adapt to the growing city that we're supplying currently. Our, our focus city is Minneapolis. After that we'll move on to, uh, to the one near the... What have we got up there? Grand Rapids? Do you like the way I chose Grand Rapids? Yes, that will be our next city. But we've got a lot to do with Minneapolis. Should we go down here? Look at the people waiting on our buses. That's only because we've got two. We'll go down here because it looks nice. Right, let's do that. So that's been that. That's been episode one. Next time, we're going to get some trains up and running and delivering logs to a sawmill. Everybody likes our buses. Look at that. Because they're all shiny and blue and yellow. We do have yellow ones as well. Yeah, you're waffling. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.